This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Okie dokie, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture's fell to rushing, and I feel good right now, partly because I see the oak tree starting to bloom, which tells me it's almost time for my antihistamines, which make me feel great. <laughs> and that plus the coffee. Uh, hey, y'all, we're going to be talking about gardening. If you want to give us a call, it is toll-free, 1-877-MPB-RING. Got plenty of stuff to talk about. Got a caller that's already starting to pour in, but first got to mention Java. You hooked me up with a TV program this past week, and I appreciate it. Oh, man. Well, I didn't hook you up. The producers uh, here in the building they they know about your presence, so they wanted you to be on uh, Fit to Eat. So, but 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 they they got you to approach me. Well, there, there we go. Yeah, I, <laughs> that happens throughout this building. I am Felder's uh, go to. Yeah, um, don't um, talk um, to Felder. Uh, Get Java to do it. Yes, I'm the go between. <laughs> anyway, I had a lot of fun, uh, uh, Chef Rob. You know, he cooked some you know some kind of Italian uh, marinara chicken and. You know, it was really, really nice with garlic and all, but I brought some fresh herbs for him to cook with, and he did. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. Well, the, the funny part about it, you know, they had this thing about, you know, it's, it's really expensive to bring food from a long ways off, you know, peppers from California and watermelons from Mexico and all like that. So they, they call them food miles. Uh-huh. And so they say, eat locally. There's no food miles like no food miles. Ah. So eating locally. Well, talking about food miles, I drove by it up to the studio. <laughs> yeah, because you, you were in your truck, and you yeah, had yeah. your herbs on the back of your truck. That's right. We went out, and we, we, cut, we cut some oregano, uh, didn't bring, cut some parsley, uh, had some, um, uh, some rosemary, which he didn't use, uh, parsley, oregano, and, and uh, basil. Basil, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because this is an Italian dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I grew them in the back of my truck and I drove, drove it right to the studio. And I told him, don't worry about any bugs on it. I drive too fast. <laughs> <laughs> and it made it and it made it made into the dish. Uh, I'm yeah. not sure when it's coming up, but it's for the new season of uh, of Fit to Eat. Yeah. So we'll, you know, we'll let everyone know when it comes yeah. out. But I, I will tell you this. He made the, the pasta, the spaghetti stuff. Out of zucchini squash, he got a little thing that he put on like an apple core, and yeah. it made these long, skinny little, little skinny. It looked like curly uh, spaghetti noodles. Uh huh. And he sautéed those. He said, you know, if you're worried about, uh, you know, the stuff you can't eat and all like that, whatever's in pasta, you, some people can't eat. I forget what it's called. Is it gluten? Yeah, gluten. Okay, gluten. yeah. And ain't no gluten in zucchini. Yeah, no. Zucchini noodles are um, are very fashionable these days. And my wife Crystal, she she does the same thing. Does you get one of those little things that that, yeah, that, that makes it that makes it into uh, you know it look it comes out looking like spaghetti noodles. Yeah. Yes. Well, he called them zucchini noodles. He calls them zoodles. <laughs> so whatever. Anyway, I got some stuff to talk about. We've got uh, people calling already, including Randy from Olive Branch. Hey, Randy. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, just had a quick question, Felder. Um, I'm starting my garden garden once again this year, and I did a soil test on it. Living in Mississippi, you know, we got that wonderful clay soil. Mm-hmm. Well, some, and, uh, some folks got good dirt. Yeah, it's 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 good to a certain point. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so I did the test, and I'm lacking uh, everything like I did last year. So I put down my 13, 13, 13. And then I covered it up with some more, uh, topped it off with some fresh uh, garden soil. So I was just wondering, how long should I actually wait for the 13, 13, 13 to be ready to put out uh, plants? Uh, okay. First of all, those are agro. They're ready to go. You know, that's one of the reasons why farmers use them. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're, you can plant today. But now here, here's the deal. If you use triple 13, then the second and third number, the phosphorus and potash, those last for two or three years or more in our soil. See, so you don't need to keep doing that every year because you get that phosphorus and potash built up. It stays built up. So all you need to do is add that like every couple of years or so. R- really, I'm, I, I used to test soil from Mississippi State. Uh, and they, they always say you need nitrogen because they never test for nitrogen. They just assume you need nitrogen Every year. See, so, you know, you're done with the triple 13. You know, you can put it out every two or three years if you want. But on the in-between years, use just nitrogen. And instead of the agriculture stuff that they recommend, 
Uh, and, you know, this is way beyond your question, but I think it's important for people to hear this. Uh, agriculture fertilizers like triple 13, triple 8, all, they use ammonium nitrate, which is real strong, real fast, and temporary. It's like a little shot of cocaine to your plants. See, so you don't need to, I would switch over from here on with a different type of nitrogen. Uh, if you want to use an agriculture type stuff, they have this stuff called urea. It's slow-acting, long-lasting, it's gentle, it gives your plants steady feeding instead of just a, a woo-hoo, and then they're gone. See, so you're done with the triple 13 maybe every two or three years, and from here on, just use a something with mostly high first number, just nitrogen. Now, you don't ever have to have your soil tested again, by the way. This will do it. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, after I did that, I started using uh, the organic fertilizer, uh, you know, after maybe two months or so, just well, here and there, just... Well, now here, here's what I would do. I actually use mostly cottonseed meal, which is readily available in Mississippi. You know, they use it a farm, uh, a cattle feed supplement. So any farm co-op type place will have this. The, it's got a seven for the first number, one or two, or one or two for the second number. So it's a good bit of nitrogen, a little bit of phosphorus and potash, which will keep what you've already got going forever. So if you just use cottonseed meal from now on, that's all the fertilizer your garden's going to need. I, I'm real sure of this. It's not just some gotcha. organic stuff. Uh, anyway, you can plant right away. The fertilizer's not that big a deal. Not going to burn your plant. Yep. One thing I would suggest, so you said you pile dirt on top of it. Before you plant, I would dig them together instead of having, you know, have mix it all together instead of having layers. Yeah, I, I did it with a rake. I mixed it all up, and then oh. I watered it in. Okay, yeah. Well, you, you're ready to plant. It's a little early for planting, but you didn't ask me about that, so we're going to move on. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Felder. Okay, Randy. Appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, Java, the scientists in me, the extension service, you know, we can talk for 45 minutes about a pencil, and he asks a good question. Can I plant? And I go, blah, 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 and then finally said, too early to plant. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to ask about that, uh, I know you said phosphorus, and then did you say potash? Yeah, potash, potassium, potash. Okay, okay. Yeah. I said like an ashtray. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but potash, potassium. I never thought about a pot. You know, I have grown plants in ashtrays before. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that look. Now let's go to Jim and Jackson. Hey, Jim, good morning. Good morning, Felder. Jim Rosenblatt here, and I've got a question about my azaleas. Yeah, I was look, I was looking at some pictures of my azaleas from last year at this time. They were in full and glorious bloom, but this year they're not that way. Did that freeze a week ago hurt them? You think? Nah, nah. Plant, plants tell time by how much cold they get. Not freezing above freezing, below forty five is called chilling hours, and uh, they they bloom according to how many chilling hours they get. Some bloom really, really early because they don't need many chilling hours. Some take a long time. And, you know, we can have hard freezes, Jim, but if it's not below 45 and above 32, plants can't tell. See, so the number of chilling hours is what determines whether plants bloom early or on time or a little bit late. Well, thank you very much. There's still hope then. Yeah, well, you know, if, if nothing else, just ride around and look at your neighbors. You know, it, it, we call it a borrowed view. All right. <laughs> Appreciate it, Jim. He said, okay. <laughs> He's worried about his azaleas. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot of stuff blooming out out there right now. Uh, drove up yesterday to uh, Carrollton, actually North Carrollton. And it's a big deal if you live up there. There's Carrollton and there's North Carrollton. And I actually drove north of North Carrollton uh, to, to visit a lady who's got a plant I'd never seen before. You know, people call about ginger, and the plant called ginger lily with white flowers. She has one that's got salmon orange flowers. Never saw it before. And it's around her, her, her ancestors' 1840s house. So I drove all the way up there to get some of it. And she was there. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I stopped by on the way, and uh, a friend of mine around the corner has got a, a plant called Clara Curtis Chrysanthemum. Some people call it country girls. Well, this lady up in Carrollton didn't have any, so I got some of my neighbor's Clara Curtis mums, and I swapped her some of those for some of this 
orange ginger, and I would give some of that to the lady I got my other stuff from. It's like a bunch of inbreeding out there with plants. Now, with that, with that orange, <laughs> with that orange ginger, is that one of those plants like you say all the time that you can only get from someone else's garden? I, you know, I've never seen it for sale yeah. anywhere, anywhere. And she got it, and. It, it probably got it. I guarantee you, all the older garden club ladies in that area all have it because when one gets it, they all end up with it. Yeah. And we're talking about plants here, not attitude. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, while we're up there, I want to throw this out. Also, uh, I visited a fellow named Larry Stephenson. Stephenson. Uh huh. Larry is a retired. Uh, factory worker, but as a hobby, he grafted fruit trees. Well, he retired last year, and now he's collecting heirloom apples and pears and the really good stuff around old farms that produce well, and he's grafting them, and he's starting to sell them. Okay. You know, and what's unique is these are plants that have been growing in Mississippi for generations, and he's ma- going to start making them where we can grow stuff that we know will do well here. Anyway, uh, we, we can have Larry uh, as, a, as a guest sometime. He's okay. a really cool guy. We're going to take a quick break, me and Java and Kevin, our, our marvelous phone greeter, and uh, talk about gardening when we come back. We have a little bit of a break. Stick with us. MPB, Mississippi Public Broadcasting, right after this. Okie dokie, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture's fell to rushing. Uh, before we go to the calls, let me mention that there's a, there are some events coming up. Um, if I can find them. Here we go. Uh, three. I know there's a lot of stuff going on right now, but these are the ones who let me know so I can help promote it. Um, in a couple of weeks, uh, March the 31st, is going to be the Flora Plant Swap. It's the oldest plant swap in the known universe. I did one of them. It goes back to 1990, and it's going to be at the Flora Library, so Thursday morning, and all you got to do is just bring some kind of good plant. When I say good, it doesn't have to be a great plant. It just needs to be something that's ready to go in case whoever gets it at the swap doesn't know how to grow anything. So a pretty good plant, ready to plant. Uh, that's going to be March the 31st at the Flora Library, and the next day, Java, you and I are going over to Meridian. We're going to do a live broadcast. Yeah, from the, one of my favorite Max. places, the Mac. Yeah, that's going to be April April Fools. April Fools. We will be there, people. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, we're going to be broadcasting live from the Max. they have got an outdoor thing that's covered, so anybody can come to it and yeah. have a little audience. So we, we always have a, 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 a fun time when we take MPB on the road. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So come out Meridian and surrounding areas. Yeah, and that's uh, the Saturday. I'm mean, excuse me, Friday, April the first, and the next day I'm doing another program at the Max. I'm giving a, a slide presentation, a, a, a real show thing. Uh, it's going to be on how to get away with using native plants, cool native plants, as regular garden plants. And then the last one I've got that same day, April the second, which is Saturday, is the mobile plant swap. I'm sorry to miss that. Well, I'm glad to be in Meridian at the Max, but the uh, the the plant swap in Mobile is just an incredible. It's not a free-for-all, but it's close to it. It's just a lot of fun. And we'll give some more details about those, those but I uh, just wanted to do mention we got plant swaps coming up and this thing at the Max where MPB, me and Java, are going to be there live. We've got nice chairs. It's dry, outdoors and all that. And uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit later. So anyway, let's speak in Meridian. Let's slide up over there and talk with Ann. Good morning, Ann. Good morning. How are you? So far, so good. Not so bad. Good. Um, I have a question about my hydrangeas that I put out two years ago. So they're still very young and small, and they had just started putting out new leaves for this year when that hard freeze came Mm -hmm. last weekend. Right. Some of mine did too, by the way. Okay. So now my pretty little tiny green leaves most of them or all of them are brown yeah it, it'll, it'll come back it'll come back hydrangeas I, grow they, you know they grow in tennessee they grow in kentucky they grow all the way up into to ohio they'll do fine and they do get burned back a little bit but they'll put out new growth just fine and i don't need to like whack off the brown stuff no heck no no okay no, just put put on some sunglasses go out and just look at the birds and the frogs and stuff like that and just ignore that kind of stuff well, I want to I want to look at my beautiful hydrangeas a little bit later too. Though. Okay, well, if you want to go out there and snip them off, but you know, just just snip off the brown stuff. Don't cut the stems back. 
Okay. And, and that's only, you know, if if you just got to. You don't need to at all. The plants don't okay. really care. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Hey, I hope to see you at the Max in a couple of weeks. If you got oh, some. Yeah. yeah, listen, listen, me and Java, we're going to be broadcasting live. And it's a fun. We have a lot of fun with it. Oh, yeah. We love the Max. Okay, well, everybody to come see you. Bring a carload. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All righty, now let's slide up to Hernando. Mike, what's going on, man? Hey, Father. Uh, of course, we're in the northern part of the state up here. My neighbor, he is a young, he and his wife, a young couple, just moved here from Alabama in September. Last night he asked me, he says, Mike, what grows up here? I mean, we want to put a garden in. Of course, I thought of you. Is there a resource online or something where he can go and learn about what grows here, what to plant, and things like that? Because they're, yeah. you know, they're from southern yeah. Alabama. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. And it's not that big a deal. It's really not. It, it, I guess he's talking about vegetables and herbs and stuff or flowers. Yes, mm-hmm. both. Well, I mean, you know, there's there's all sorts of publications on on that that are written for Southerners, but in Mississippi, uh, if you'll go to the to the Mississippi State website, it's MSU Cares C A R E S MSU Cares dot com. It stands for like Coordinated uh-huh. Access to Research and Extension Education, something like, you know, MSU Cares dot com, and it's got a search box right at the very top, and just type in Garden tabloid like the like a newspaper garden tabloid it's the single uh-huh. best publication on growing vegetables and herbs in mississippi it's not pretty it doesn't have a lot of color pictures but it's got what types grow best what varieties of each type I and mean, that's that's a big deal planting dates and all that kind of stuff and it's free that, you can download it or exactly or, that's exactly what he wants but now he also needs to he, he needs to meet a gal named joy I'm drawing, I'm drawing a blank. I've known Joy forever. Joy, Dr. Joy. Ah, I can't believe it. We'll, 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 we'll figure it out okay. in, in know, one moment. She, she's a horticulture uh, agent there, you know, just south of Hernando, you know, on the highway, the extension office. they got a little demonstration garden right there, and they've got master gardeners who love oh. to talk about flowers and vegetables. Joy, I've known Joy. I've known her so Joy long. Joy Anderson? As, Joy Anderson. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I know Joy Anderson. I've been to it. I've she, been there. She is the best. And she's got master gardeners there who can help these folks and make them feel good, too. Oh, good, good, good. Because, you know, they're a young couple. They want to stretch their budget. And he said, we want to put a garden in our backyard. Of course, you know, I immediately thought of you, but you, you're right. Okay. I've been to that extension office. Okay. And they for, do have for, a beautiful little garden. Okay. Forget Felder, Joy Anderson. That's where I'm going. Okay, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, Felder. You bet. How'd you, Java, how'd you find Joy? Did you look it up? Did you, did you no, Joy I, Hernando? I've known, I've known Dr. Joy Anderson for years, okay. man. Do you know she Dr. Joy Anderson? Okay. Very cool. Well, I'm too far away from this thing, but I, th- I think I can see Julius or, no, John. What does that say? John in Elmer, Tennessee. Okay. John, where is Elmer, Tennessee? Elmer, Tennessee, north of Flint. Okay, gotcha. What's going on this morning? Um, so I had um, a 15 acres of pine logged off my property, um, and I'm wanting to turn it into pasture. And um, right now it's just got the stumps cut off at ground level. Mm-hmm. Um, what do I need to put in the soil to get it to grow good grass as quick as possible? Okay, I'm going to give you some really, really good advice here. And this, I don't know. <laughs> You need to call the, the county. I'm serious about it. Call the county extension office. They deal with this full time as a living, and they don't sell stuff. And he can have you soil test, and he can tell you what works best, what type of grass, the type of time of planting. Uh, this this is what you know. I do horticulture full time. He does agriculture full time. Okay. And, and and he's local, so uh, you know, contact the extension office sooner or later. You got to deal with him anyway, because that's the source of information, nonprofit information, and uh, and just take it from there. Okay, perfect. I appreciate it. All righty. That's twice I said. Eh, just call somebody local. Uh, well, I mean, sometimes the, that easy advice is the advice. best advice. It's, it's good, yes. you know. No, no miles like no miles. There you go. Hey, uh, this I talked about uh, visiting Larry St- uh, Stephenson antique uh, apples and pears. He grafted some. It's been probably thirty years since I grafted anything, but he let me graft. I stole some cuttings off of a crab apple tree in my neighborhood. 
a pretty little tree, nice little round tree. It's got beautiful flowers, and it's got these sm- these apples. Uh, they're, they're sm- a crab apple is just a small apple, uh-huh. and they're just big enough for me to put my fingers around. And anyway, it's a beautiful plant, great yard plant, makes apples, no insects, no diseases, and all these apples, you licking your lips there, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I stole some cuttings off of that. I, just, I liberated a few stems. There we go. Took him up there, and he gra- he showed me how to grab and let me graft one to bring back and put in my yard. Okay. So That's, now you got to have a crab apple tree. I got yeah, a crab apple tree, and, 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 uh, and, and grafting it makes it grow better because these things don't root very well. Ah. Uh-huh. And, we, and, and I know that it'll do well because I've been watching it for years, and the church people don't even know about it. I'm the one who eats all the crab apples. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. The, when you say grafting, what's that? I guess that you, process. It's like uh, it, it's like you you know if uh, it's like you you cut one finger off and then cut it on put it on the end of another finger, so you got a twice along a finger. Okay. Maybe that's well, not the best. Maybe that's not the best. You cut the top off of something that's really good. That's, yeah, that's already that, growing that, and that, established. That, yeah, that doesn't have good roots. Okay. And you find a plant that's got good roots, and you cut it off, and you put the good the top plant on the good root plant. Uh huh. So the 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 good plant gets the benefit of having the good that's roots, right. and it grows a little that's bit. Right. That's right. That's right. Okay. He also had this plant called a gumi. You know, I've been talking about gumi for a long. I don't talk about it much because you can't get it, but it's a type of shrub that dro- it gets, oh, bigger than an azalea. It drops all of its leaves in the winter, but it has real pretty flowers, and it makes these uh, these little fruits on it called gumi berries. And it's a terrific, easy-to-grow yard plant that has good fruit. The The big problem with the gumi berry is you can't buy it anywhere. Can well, you eat a gumi berry? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, they're you know, they're like little crab apple things. Okay, okay, okay. So anyway, that's one of those kind of plants I've been wanting to talk about, but you couldn't find it. Well, he's got a big one, and uh, and he said he's not sure how to root it. Well, I'm going to find out. We're going to get in collaboration, see if we can't get gumi bushes available for sale through, like, garden centers and stuff. Okay. Isn't that cool? So coming to a hut toes near you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Uh, and by the way, w- driving uh, back, cut down through the Delta, I think I mentioned last year that I went to this place called the Sky Lake Cypress Trees with thousand-year-old cypress trees. That's one of uh, Kevin's favorite favorite areas. You, you've been up there? Well, uh, th- it says the gate closes at 5, and I didn't trust them. <laughs> so I drove in, and I walked all the way up that borough, beautiful trees, came back out, and gate was closed. And as you know, Kevin, it is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but luckily, apparently they've had that problem before because there's a gate that when you drive up to it, it opens automatically. But I was thinking we're going to have to spend the night in the Jeep and broadcast live from Sky Lake from outside Sky Lake. Belzona. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it, it's, it's free. It's a cool place to take kids. It's uh, just a few miles north of Belzona. Between Belzone and Itabina, it's got a nice little Sky Lake sign, and it's a cool, cool place. Huge cypress trees, a thousand years old. Oh yeah, it's a it's it's a great place. We talk about it often on Creature Comforts. Yeah, and uh, the, all the fields are full of flowers. You know, the farmers are getting ready to plant, but there's one. Uh, and we still a lot of daffodils. You know, along roadsides and in little small towns. You know, shout out to some of these small towns. You can see where that used to be a house because there's just lots of daffodils and long skinny rows. But uh, last week we got a call from somebody wanting to know what that purple stuff was. Uh-huh. Well, I saw fields and fields of it. it's called henbit. And it's an edible plant, just like dandelions, which are like little sunflowers. So between dandelions and henbit, some of these other beautiful wildflowers, good pollinators, good for bees, they grow in your yard, and you can mow them and have a regular lawn summer. Anyway, if you've got some dandelions and henbits in your yard, mow around a little bit of it. Hey, hang on. We got a song about that. We're going to take a quick break, folks, and come back and talk about gardening here on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Oh, the dandelion is my favorite flower You cut it down, it grows back in an hour It never gives up Reaching for the sunlight Ah, oh, the dandelion grows wild in summer Nourished from above by sweet rainwater Proud and strong Blowing in the breezes All along the roadside In the ditches and the pastures A sea of yellow just for you and me 
don't kill the dandelion Don't call it a weed for trying To spring up from that cold dark earth The same place that gave us birth It might not please the nose Like the tulip or the thorny rose But as far as flowers go I like the dandelion As far as flowers go I pick the dandelion Okay, welcome back, folks. We're having too much fun up here. Somebody give us a call to make us stop doing all this stuff and yakking and laughing and stuff. Give us a call. It's toll free one eight seven seven MPB ring. And uh, Java, I mentioned the daffodils. Um, there's a fellow who's in the daffodil, the, da- the daffodil society. And he was also in the Daylily Society. He passed away last year. And uh, his daughters uh, came out and they dug a bunch of his bulbs. We're talking about hundreds of different kinds. And there were a few left over in the bulldozers that come through there. So I went in there the other day and dug a few more uh, to spread around here and there. And I brought these two. And I don't know if you've seen them all your life. And everybody knows, you know, daffodils are. They got the yellow flowers, sometimes white, the big old cup. But they don't know about this little bitty one. They got two small flowers. Real fragrant. These are called jonquils, and they're both daffodils. But a lot of people think, well, the yellow ones are jonquils, the white ones are daffodils. No, they're all daffodils, which is folk name for all narcissus. Narcissus is a Latin name. And I was just about to say, I've been around you too long because I know daffodils are nar- narcissus. Yeah, but there's different <laughs> kinds, and one of them's called jonquils, and people don't understand what makes a jonquil. Most daffodils have this leaf sort of shaped like a butter knife flat green leaf yeah well there's some that have little skinny leaves they're skinny and they're hollow they're shaped like a quill ah john quill there you nice. go nice and there's lots of different kind of daffodils but only the jonquils have the little quill like leaf isn't that a stupid thing to know well i mean it but also the size too it's that's yeah out of control yeah so anyway, John, that's my heirloom. You know, I like to talk about heirloom, edible, and native plants. Well, my, my, my native plant for today is red bud, which are pink. That ain't red. <laughs> that's pink. I don't even know if that's pink. No, that's the, yeah, yeah. it's a little, a little purple in there. Well, maybe the buds are red, but the flowers are pink. Yeah. But, uh, and they're all around the woods. It's a terrific native plant. It grows in the shade or the sun. But I also want to talk about this because it's not just a native plant. It's also an edible plant. Whoa. The leaves taste, the little flowers taste just like raw peanuts. It's in the <laughs> pea family. Okay. So anyway, my native plant and an edible plant all in one. Red bud. If you don't believe me, folks, walk around. Nobody's looking. Just munch on, roll it around, chomp on it. <laughs> and trust me, it tastes just like uh, if you've ever been hungry, you know what raw peanuts taste like. Unsalted. Yeah, unsalted <laughs> raw peanuts. So anyway, let's go back to the calls. We're going to start out. Oh, phooey. You got this thing a long way. Brandon from? Pontotoc. Pontotoc. Hey, Brandon, what's going up in North Mississippi? Oh, just a lot of rain. And yeah, stormy weather, but other than that, it's we, pretty good. We 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 wrung some of that rain out before it got to you. Well, good. It I was, appreciate that. It was I don't a, really need a lot. <laughs> it was a lot of rain. What you got okay. going on today? Yeah, I uh, just really want to ask you one question. Uh, but I, I thought of something else. But um, there used to be a tree that I used to see sometimes when I was walking on the sidewalk and stuff around town that made these huge green seed pods. And I remember somebody telling me that was an extremely hard wood. And I can't remember the name of it. And uh, okay, the seed pods they look like the big, big round grapefruit looking things, but they're lime yeah. green. Yes, yes, that, that's yeah, the one. yeah. Uh, a lot of people call that bodock. They call bodock. it. They call it horse apple. Uh, the lat, that. yeah, the lat name is Maclura pomifera. For those folks who don't don't think I know that kind of stuff, but it's called bodock because that's how we say boas de arc. Which, uh, that ain't the way you say it. It's a French word, B-O-I-S-D apostrophe A-R-C. Because if you notice, the stems are long, they're curved, and they're really hard wood. And Native Americans would use them to make their bows for the bows and arrows. Real strong and curved. So boas de arc or bodoc. Okay, good. That's what I need to find. You know, I, I was thinking ironwood for some reason. I kept thinking, no, that's not right. No, but ironwood is a good one. No, this is both, and the and the wood, by the way, is is orange colored. 
But anyway, look at a, a Boas, B-O-I-S-D apostrophe A-R-C or horse apple, and it'll take okay. you to it. It's a great I'm plant. Gonna make a, I'm going to make a cutting board out of some if I can find some. Well, you know, it, it, if, if you call the county extension office, I bet you he knows where some are. I'll do that. I forgot about that. I need to get some checks and soil. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, appreciate it. Have a good day. All righty. We went from north, way up north in the icebox. We're going to slide down the Gulf Coast down to Long Beach and talk to Lola. Hey, good morning, Lola. Hi. Howdy. It's Leela. Leela. Okay. <laughs> See, <laughs> they've, they've, um, got, they've got my, my monitors like five feet away, and I wear bifocals. So anyway, what's up, yes, Leela? In that problem, I have the same situation. So um, my sisters and I are giving um, – our nephew's fiance a wedding shower in May. Mm-hmm. My sister, who's hosting, wants edible flowers to place in different areas, and we've got a few recipes and different things. Uh huh. My problem is, where? What can I personally grow? Because I don't think I can just buy edible flowers. Well, yeah, there's 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 so many good edible flowers. I actually have a list of them. But, you know, if you were to plant squash, squash blossoms are big and pretty, and they're perfectly edible. Uh, you know, you may still have, this is going to be in May, you may not have any pansies or violas left, but they're edible. Oh. But rose petals, there will be somebody out there who's still got some violets bloom in their yard. Uh, the, the, you can eat the, the flowers of uh, of basil. Um I'm just trying to think of so many other edible, you know, right off the top of my head. There's lots, and there, there's yeah. some, and you can walk around the yard, the, the neighborhood, and get a whole bunch of them as long as they haven't been sprayed or anything. Well, and that's that's the that's the thing. When I read about edible flowers, it warned: be careful. Don't just go get them from the florist and eat them. You can't do that. And so I'm trying to decide what to plant. I have the rose petals covered. That I've got several rose bushes. I don't spray anything. And then I can plant squash for sure. That's, those are two good, good suggestions. Well, here, I, ha- I did put some, some uh, pansies and bowls in. I did put yeah. those in. Here's, a, here's, a, here's another one, and this will blow everybody away. And you can make, And I've even got a good recipe. All the flowers of daylilies are edible. Okay. okay, the pretty ones, the real colorful ones, have kind of a tangy taste. But those old orange daylilies and the yellow ones, the light color, they're so they're, you could chop up the le- the flowers and put them in anything. But you can take a daylily flower, uh, whole thing, and pluck out those little frilly things in the middle of it. So so it makes it like a little cup. Put it in a compost dish, a little bit of sherbet on it, and then sprinkle some rose petals, some other stuff on top of it. Okay, but will they be blooming? Yeah, uh, in May, you bet. Okay. You okay, bet. Well, I have some of those, too. And I yeah. was wondering when they bloom, so that's really great. Okay, well, I'm on my way. Thank you. That's the so start. Much. If you want to if you want to shoot me an email, I'll send you a list of other stuff, and I'll, and I'll highlight the ones that I think will be uh, blooming around uh, down on the coast by then. But uh, and, uh, just go to felderrushing.blog, B-L-O-G, and that'll take you right to the things that email me. Thank you so much. Okay, y'all have fun. Thanks. Appreciate it. See ya. Now, Felder, you yeah. said you said take the daylily. Yeah, daylily. They got you know they got kind of hand shaped flowers. Uh huh. And, and, and they got all the, little frilly things inside. Take those out. Yeah, and then it, it makes like a little cup. Uh huh. Put it in a little dish, a little thing of ice cream on top. Sprinkle some other edible flowers on top. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, I said uh, red buds taste like raw peanuts. Uh-huh. Daylilies taste like raw squash to me. Mm. You know, if you're ever just taking a yellow squash and, and break it off. And even if she doesn't have any squash herself, there will be plenty of people around there. Just make sure she gets them from people who haven't sprayed them. Yeah, okay. Or haven't sprayed them that, that day or the day before. So, anyway, Cool. Okay, now you have to help me out here. It looks like from him. Looks like Jim on the road. Hey, Jim. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I heard you talking about uh, hydrangeas earlier. Yeah. And my father lives in northeast Ohio. Yeah. Has a one hydrangea plant. It's big and beautiful, about five foot tall or so. Does not bloom. Hmm. What can he do about that? 
Well, <clears throat> I don't know. You know, it could be a different possibility. It might be that it's in way too much shade. He might have just really, really bad dirt. When he, you know, a lot of times when people plant things, they don't spread the roots out, and that can stunt yeah. a plant for the rest of its life. So if it's been there for a long time, it probably has outgrown that. What he could do is try to lightly loosen the dirt out away from the trunk. Just a little mm-hmm. bit, you know. Don't don't turn it over like you know, plant tomato. Just kind of crack it a little bit yeah. and give it just a scant handful of fertilizer, just a scant handful, and see if that doesn't help. So what? Eight 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 or anything? Oh no 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 no. Let's don't use. You know, a lot of people use agriculture fertilizers because they're cheap, and that's what we used to do. Let's use something that's, that's for flowering trees or shrubs because it, the type of nitrogen is nice and slow and long-lasting and gentle. Uh, garden fertilizer like triple eight, triple thirteen, real, real harsh on plants. Okay. And, uh, also, uh, also make sure he hasn't pruned it. If he prunes it really, really hard, you know, a lot of them bloom on last year's growth. Some of them bloom on uh-huh. New Year's growth. As long as it hadn't been pruned too hard. So tell them not to prune it this year. Okay. Yeah, and just get some sort of uh, fertilizer for blue. A- a- any garden center is going to have tree and shrub right. fertilizer or rose fertilizer. Anything that's for, 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 for shrubs. That'll work. Yeah. Many thanks. Okay, appreciate it. And tell them, tell them to stay warm. It's going to be another month. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's two months before they can plant. Oh, it's 70 degrees up there today. Yeah, but, but, but you know what's going to happen. But they still get some cold weather. You bet. You bet. Anyway, appreciate it, man. Thank you much. Okay. Johnny from Natchez. Natchez. Hey, Johnny. Good morning. We're going to have to move this uh, screen closer to you. Yeah. What's what's up, man? I just had a quick question, too. I've been trying to identify this particular tree. It's very prolific. I mean, it it just grows everywhere around... um, but anyway, it's got like the the bark of an oak, and then the leaves are shaped like a spade, almost you know, like on a playing card. Yeah. And uh, big and leaves? So, are they big, big leaves? Not extremely big, probably the size of a, the palm of your hand. Mm-hmm. And then they've got the the seeds. Whenever the seeds fall on everything, too, they're tiny and black. And um, what kind of flower would it have? I mean, because I'm seeing all sorts of trees with 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 sort of heart shaped leaves. Yeah, I, you know, I may have to take a picture and, and send it to you. Never yeah. But I'll yeah. say this: this thing grows wherever. I, it's the easiest growing tree that I've ever seen. Um, but you know, I but I don't know what you know. I was trying to look it up and. Maybe it was close to maybe a basswood or it could, it could be you know ba- basswood you know if, if you want to Google it tilia T I L I A in England they call lime trees and I don't know why but anyway tilia oh. has heart shaped leaves like that and it's a native plant tilia okay yeah uh, I mean, you know. it just I, I gave it away to my parents who used to live in Florida there and they planted it in the yard and man it just took off and then it sprouted others just. I mean, I don't know if the wind took the seeds. I mean, yeah, just, well, if it's a native plant, there you are know, all sorts of ways to, to disperse the seeds. But anyway, there there are several really good commonly grown and native uh, uh, trees that have got heart-shaped leaves, uh, different sizes. Oh, okay. so, so, you know, if you could send me a picture, that'd be ideal. But uh, basswood, yeah, yeah, yeah. basswood tilia has, has got that. Um, anyway, a whole bunch of uh, uh, red buds have got heart-shaped leaves. But you'd know if it's a red bud because it'd have pink flowers on it. No, it does. It doesn't yeah. have any flowers. Yeah, see, see me a picture. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, okay. I, I, I've got, I've got pictures. It look, looks like somebody took a deck of cards with nothing but space and threw them up in the air, and that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, that's it. And and again, the leaf is about average size, about the size. Yeah, of got 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 to see a picture. Hand. We're 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 done with this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. I mean, you know, either either you know it or you don't. And you know, and if you don't know it, and you know you don't know it, let's move on. I need more data. <laughs> let's move on to Memphis. Okay, shut up, Melody. Melody. No, <laughs> hey, Melody, how are you this morning? Hello. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Sure, can. can you how hear me? We can. How are you doing this morning? Good. So I just had a question for you guys about I have two baby apple trees. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and right now they're growing in containers, and obviously they're going to get too big for that at some point. So if you have a lawn that is being, like, sprayed regularly with weed killer, how long, like, if you stop that, how long do you have to wait before you can... Well, this, like is, this is a really good question, and, you know, as luck would have it, the stuff they spray for weeds is it, it's really not that great. The, all the good stuff we used to spray for weeds is gone. The stuff they have now, once it dries, it's safe. That's, that's just the way they work. So, so you don't have okay. to wait any time is what I'm saying. However, if they keep spraying for weeds out there, then that stuff, when they spray, if your tree's got leaves on it then, it could drift up and cause problems. See, so, you know, the, the, what we use on weeds is not really good for trees and shrubs because they're sort of like weeds when it comes to herbicides. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but, it, like, if you stop spraying, then, like, as soon as you couldn't see the spray anymore, that would be safe to plant. Yeah, sure, sure, sure it would be. Well, now, let me throw you know, an unasked question. Uh, if you're going to grow apples out in a lawn, keep in mind a lawn is an artificial prairie, and apples are woodland plants. And so you need to make the roots of the apple think that it's in the woods. So you need to dig a wide hole and then, you know, cover it. We're talking about at least three or four feet across so it can grow roots straight out without competing with grass. Because, you know, the grass is greedy, and apple's going to need some of that. So dig a nice wide hole and mulch it, and either plant some monkey grass or some flowers. Plant something around the base of it. Don't have grass just coming right up to the tree is what I'm saying. Okay. Wow, yeah, I didn't know that. Thanks so much. All righty. Well, appreciate it. You can plant any time you can dig a good hole, and it's going to take a day or two to dry out after last night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it, Melanie. Yep. Okay, now, I can see Jackson. This is like an eye test. Judy, Barber, and Jackson. Okay. Good morning, Judy. Good morning, Felder. <laughs> We're trying to see what happened to Jesse Yancey's garden on Poplar Street. Uh, Je- you know, just- Je- Jesse's an old friend of mine, and he, he was featured in my book about Dr. Dirt. Uh, about gorilla garden, okay. Je- Jesse moved to Raymond. He moved, and you know that wasn't oh, even his oh, property. Oh, you know that wasn't even Jesse was a gorilla <laughs> garden that was that belonged to the apartment across the street from where he lived. <laughs> so when he moved, he took his he got master gardeners to come in and get some plants. Neighborhood people got plants. He took a few with him, and basically they just scooped it up, and it's just like when he first started. But it's a parking lot of a, uh, you know, he grew basically on somebody else's land. He just, he he moved to Raymond, and uh, his his the people took their property back. And it was, Thank you very we're, much. and we're so sorry about that. But you know that's that makes you appreciate you know people who are doing fun stuff in the neighbor makes you appreciate them because you know the, the gardens like people are very ephemeral. But wasn't it great while it lasted? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah, some people say, well, he came and destroyed Jesse. No, Jesse moved, you know, and he took as much as he could with him, you know, and so that's just what happens. You know, appreciate, gather ye rosebuds while ye may. So we're going to take a real quick break and come back. Oh, we're, we, we got time to come back, don't we? Yeah, we do. Okay. I was, uh, <laughs> you know, the, we've got stuff moved away. You've done something in here. You've cleaned you know, up or something. It, I, I will admit, it's a little different. It's a okay. little different. <laughs> But anyway, we're going to take a quick break, folks, and come back. Um, did rescue a little green tree frog this past week. Got a picture of it coming out of a Coca-Cola bottle. Uh, we've got all sorts of, uh, of uh, you start here, the spring peepers. You know, the birds are banging into the mirror out in the yard. You know, spring is here. Spring is here. Well, in a couple of three days, it'll officially be spring. Still a little early for setting out summer vegetables. I'd still wait till April when the soil is warm and we don't have any cold rains. We'll be right back with the, more of the Gestalt Garden here on Mississippi Public Broadcasting right after this.
All right, folks, welcome back. Felder Rushing here. we got time for another call or two. If you jump right on at one eight seven seven mpb ring give us a call. Otherwise, it's going to be next week before you can yak with us uh, uh, about stuff. Um, would like to mention Java. We were <laughs> driving around. You know it's too early to plant your summer garden uh-huh. because there's a lot of, a lot of fishermen along all these lakes and all, and they're out there fishing, but they're sitting on their bait buckets. And what does that tell you? I don't know. It's too cold to sit on the dirt. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> when okay. the when when the fishermen start sitting on the bank, it's warm enough to plant. <laughs> That's another indicator. You know, you you just you're a city guy. I am. I, I am immediately <laughs> you, you, so a city gra- guy. Your grandmother will know about this because you know this, this is what folks used to do. It's too cold to you know we got to sit on the bait bucket. That's all right. Anyway, I don't know where that came from. Uh, would like to, to remind folks again, in a couple of weeks, we're going to start having plant swaps. One at the Flora Library, Thursday, March the 31st. Uh, one in the Mobile, uh, downtown Mobile, April the 2nd. And we'll talk about these later. And then, Java, you and I are going to be in Meridian at the Max on April Fool's Day, broadcasting live. And it's a live audience. So come on, you know, just go. they got chairs and everything set up. Yeah, and it's over the pavilion. It's always a, a a great time. Yeah, it's outside, so we in the in the air. So it's it's a great time. Yep. Uh, there was something else I wanted to mention. I, I made some notes. And I can't remember. What, I can't find it. I can't find. Oh, I know what it was. Last week, daylight savings time I came back around, and I'm thinking, I need to change my lights so they come on later. Well, and you I realize, know they get they just passed the thing in the Senate, I think about. Yeah. Keeping daylight saving Which means time it, or something. means it's going to be dark at 930 in the morning sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, I, I realize my lights don't, they don't care. They come on the same time anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk to a- Ainsley in Louisiana. Ainsley, good morning. What's up? Good morning. Um, I heard you say a while back that uh, tell someone that their dogwood didn't bloom because it had too much shade if, if it was in full shade. So I cut off. Uh, the trunk and intended to dig up the stump, but then it put out like shoots, maybe it got up to three or four feet high, so uh-huh. I decided to transplant it where it would be an open sun. I want to know to get it, that, I did that a couple of months ago, and I can still get green when I scratch the, yeah. the, the shoots, but I wanted to know how many shoots would be optimal. It has probably a dozen now. Yeah. Okay. Should I cut off some of them or what? Okay. Good Good question. Answer your question. I would leave one or two, and those will be all the energy that goes to what you cut off or go to what's left, and they look more like a tree. So, you know, go ahead and do that. And, and by the way, it wasn't me that said about it. dogwoods grow in the 100% heavy shade naturally. They would rather be in shade than sun. But we see them in both areas. So the main thing is make sure you dug a wide hole and that you cover the ground with mulch to make the roots think they're in the woods. Well, you said that, that uh, it could grow perfectly well in shade. That's but where they grow naturally. Too much shade, it w- it, that, that's what was keeping it from flowers. No, that, that wasn't me. I'd have never said that because that ain't true. Whoever said that was making that up. They grow in dense shade. In, in, well, anyway, I guess I misunderstood you. Yeah, Mine yeah. was under a big oak tree and it never bloomed. Well, so under, was, you know, it might be hard to compete, grow roots under an oak tree. You know, but that's not the shade. This is growing too close to a big old oak tree. But anyway, make sure the, the hole is wide and you cover it with leaves so the roots think they're out in the woods. That, so that's, I have it in full sun. It is, is wi- full wide full hole, a lot of... Place. A lot of leaf mulch, you know, dig a dig hole at least three feet across and cover it with leaves so the roots think that they're, they're in the in the, the woods with, with leaves on them. Okay, thank you. All right, I appreciate it. And have we got time to talk to Paul? Unfortunately, no. Paul, we don't sorry. <laughs> sorry, Paul. He begged you to call, and then we said, go away. Come back next week. Sorry so, about that, Paul. Yeah, that's okay. Or shoot me an email at uh, felderrushing.blog and it sounds weird some of you aren't into that kind of stuff but that's my way of keeping stuff straight it's got a big thing to email me so uh, Java did you do anything for uh, St. Patrick's Day yesterday? 
Um, I forget. actually didn't, but I'm I'm getting ready for the uh, for the parade for ne- the parade next, next week. Next week, yeah. I'm jockeying to see if I can get my truck back in it. And oh, I was it's, a grand, I it's was nice gonna, and green. Come on, yeah, yeah. I was. It's not emerald green. John Deere green. That's close. <laughs> but anyway, folks, if you get a chance, the farmers markets are cranking up again. We got a lot of farmers markets going. Garden centers are getting stocked with stuff for springtime. A little early to plant some of that stuff, but time to get it. If you have a chance, if you got kids around. Uh, take them to a garden center or a farmer's market. You know, let them meet people who, who grow stuff, part of the green industry. Uh, get them to.